just get scared for a second. Actually, she reminds me of my little one. Hey, sweetie. Oh, hey. Say hi to the camera. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is the Fab Hatcher Show with our special guest, Ant Hatcher. Hi. Let me tell you something. Tell I got me. magic powers. I just turned Amy Winehouse to stone. <laughs> She's not dead. She's frozen in time. Crazy, huh? Crazy. So y'all looking at Camden Town right now. Look at all the vintage places. Well, every time you come to Tam Town, cats like us that laid it down. That's just the reality, the OAI. Inspired and inspiring, even when I'm not inspired by. You see the lock up here? Used to be punks up here. Punks are gone. What happened to the punks? Where are the punks, man? And where's punk land? And it sounds like. Should put some tiger stripes in that guy. How come there's no statues of Ant Hatcher out here in Camden? We're gonna take care of it. <laughs> walking in the streets, walking in the streets. Your slogan is native or nothing. So what is your native nationality? Um, my family are African American, Native American Indian. We're from the uh, Eastern Band of the Cherokee Nation. And we have a little bit of Italian mixed in as well from my grandfather. You know. Well, Angela had a shop in the Sables Market right next to the African drum shop called the Aquaba Gallery. Oh, drum shop called Finishing Touches? Yeah. And I caught her smoking crack cocaine in the back of the shop and doing tricks. When her husband was watching the front of the shop, I said, Lady, your husband is not knowing what's going on back here. He's mind your business. And, I was, <laughs> and then he joined in. Yeah. Did he? Freaky like that. I had a $50 note. My contribution. <laughs> Became good friends after that. Bosom buddies. <laughs> we go way back. Way back. We got some more funny stories to tell. She would know me. By, hold on, I'll be right back. Keep filming. Sorry. He's not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've known him for forever. Can you describe his character? He's a nutter. He's a nutter. Yeah, an absolute nutter. Ever since I've met him, I just don't think we've ever said one sensible word between the two of us. Like the story we had before. Like the story. <laughs> All jokes and fun. That's Anthony. What has he brought to the area? I think uh, he has a, a, a lovely energy. He's brought a lovely energy to the market. Mm. He stands out from the crowd. I think that's what he's brought to the market. He's brought light, brightness, happiness wherever he goes. Um, he's been a good friend. Well, that's really nice to hear. This is Scar Studios. This is a place as musicians and artists since I've been coming here since about 2000. And it's been ripped down by the Camden lot because they call it development, but it's actually destruction meant. <laughs> and this is where everybody used to hang out. Amy Winehouse, me, the African Indians, LAI. Um, loads of different other musicians. Arctic Monkeys, I'm sure, came here. So, this is a really cool place. It's gone right now, but this is a little bit of Cam and Memorabilia. There you go. Long time ago. And if you see me, and while I'm traveling, I'm coming places that you might have been. I'm going places that you might have seen. I'm going places that might never have been, or might have never have been seen. But there's one thing about traveling, I'm a traveling man. And there's one thing about the land, is that when you're traveling, you're traveling, man. I've come across your songs and found them 
eclectic. We're epic eclectic as a band because, and I still say it. People That's what I read in your little commentary. Yeah. It was epic eclectic. Epic but eclectic. I didn't. I didn't understand the whole epic. I know. Well, eclectic. when you think of epic, you look at Lord of the Rings and you're like, Thou shalt not pass. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then when you think of eclectic, you know, you can go from country music to death metal to hip hop. To roots, whatever. I mean, because I mean, it's all about entertaining people. So when you're saying epic eclectic, all I'm saying is that I'm not gonna. I don't like particularly just to be a rock band because I like jazz, yeah, and so I don't want to just. I want to be having the freedom to be epic eclectic instead of saying like I'm a jazz musician. Thank you oh, for yes, bringing me my bike. Hello, how are you doing? We're doing well. See you later, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. We can finish the interview on this. Let's do it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blaze for days. Mr. Blaze. So how do we know Mr. Ant? Anthony. Oh, it's like like he's a lost brother. Brother from another mother. Yeah. How long ago was this? Oh, it was a happy reunion? meeting. It was a happy meeting about six years ago, seven years ago. Oh, here wow. here in Camden Town. So what can you say? What has he brought to the market? Happiness and joy. Happiness and joy? Yeah. And a lot of good music. And a lot of good music. Yeah. What would you say about his music? That it was very good. All right. We're you see how? Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> Careful! It just came from the shop. We don't. <laughs> well, you, well, you see how you see how things change all of a sudden when you when you uh, see how Ooh. things change and how things happen. Now this is called being natural. We are not editing this. This is exactly how it's going to be put out. That's the way it exactly. is now. Question? Oh, let's go. Right. So we got up to your band, the original, the original African Indians. Mm -hmm. Now, when we first met. I saw you and your Mm-hmm. I watched it, yeah, the famous blue. Yeah. I heard mm -hmm. that you actually built your own flute. Yeah. Tell I us the story it. behind that. Oh, well, I made my instruments because, you know, they're expensive and I didn't have any loot. So basically, and also, it's this, I think when you make something, you, you get a little more endeared with it. So. I really enjoyed it to kind of like make the instrument and do those type of things. So, and it was also brought me kind of a piece. Well, was that just with your flute? Or do you play more instruments? Yeah, I play more. I play percussion. I lived in West Africa. I played djembe. I play electric guitar, acoustic guitar, synthesizers. I play some harp and kora and didgeridoos and percussion. You see this house behind me right here, right? When I was in Camden, like really when I started living. Um, I was at number 24 right here with this crazy Irish lady named Sinead and um, she was like a hoarder, she had this, all this crazy stuff, her, hus her ex-husband was um, a blues musician and builder and such. Right down here is where Amy Winehouse had her flat, so we were neighbors, next door neighbors. She didn't have a front door as you can see, so we all she used to leave to the back door and this is where we used to live. And over here this building was owned by Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson. Would you say mm -hmm. you're an instrument yourself? Because from yeah. Sounds Like Sun Thunder, yeah. there's one lyric I absolutely adore. Okay, you remember it? More than dust in the air, forever there. Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, I, everything about Sounds Like Thunder or any song that I ever write is, I can honestly say it with all my beautiful mindset in the world, I, it doesn't come from me. I just sit there and, I, and I, I'm at peace or I'm at a zone part where I just feel the words coming to me. I have a feeling and then the way I see things and I think the way people see things and I all of a sudden I have this um, this this flow that'll come out and I'll make it rhyme at times but most of the time it's just more important to get the flow out it and say exactly. Comes from your soul. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, this is Onyx. Hi Onyx, how you doing? Is buddy? this Onyx? Yeah, this is Onyx. This is Onyx the dog. Yeah. Onyx is a big fan of the OAI. He bought four albums last week. Having to stay middle of the line and Ooh, my baby don't let me Oh, the girl don't take so uh -huh. So people are getting tired of that, you know, just pigeon shit. 
So I think they want something to really dig a dog shit, you know, something that's really, really good. You know, something that's healthy, wealthy, and wise. I mean, they're talking about physical wealth, because we all know that the gold dinner was gonna whip everybody's ass. Last question. Yes, ma'am. Remember when I first spoke to you? I know, it was instantaneous. For him? For me. For him. I knew she would interview me and do it very well. <laughs> I remember saying mm -hmm. Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, Jesus. I know, mm -hmm. I know. Who imitated who? Uh, nothing to do with it. I don't even know none of these people. I think that directors have been telling me for a long time. You know, but the thing is, is this is my hair. Tell me hair. that story that you told me before. Well, I, about, this, yeah, come to it, come to it. This is my hair. This is the way I look. And I think that, I don't think, I know. When I left the, I was used to be in the Marines. And when I left the military, I, I knew this is Wiley, I saw Bob Marley, I mean, and this is, I mean, I was really in love with root culture and, and, and that kind of getting back to it and really go back to something that they don't want you to be in a way. Yeah, anyway, this this thing with all these Disney films is whatever they are, Jack Sparrow, I really don't care nothing about, it's nothing to do with me, but they can deliver a check to my account because they definitely bit my style, and that's a fact, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> There's all this candy culture. It's kind of like bad for your teeth. That's why we do the OAI, the African Indians, the way we do it. Right, what do we see for the future at? I'm going to be at Glastonbury, and Jack Sparrow ain't coming there either, because I'm going to whap I'll be like the movies, except I win. You see? And I'm going to go to Glastonbury, and lots of things in the pipeline. Lots of things in the pipeline. To actually make a difference about something, something that means something. I mean, if it means something to somebody. So whether you buy the album or you download it, well, that's another thing altogether because we know how the music industry works. It doesn't. Thank you so much for this talk. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you soon. Hey, have a good time from the OAI. And what's the name of the show? The Fab Hatcher Show. That's what we're talking about. I know. I'm looking at my butt. <laughs>